There's another version of our world in which instead of speaking, shouting or whispering, human beings sing. In Hollywood, this alternative reality is known as the musical. Back in the mid-2000s, the musical was thought to have disappeared from the screens, but the movie adaptation of Dreamgirls suddenly gave it back a surprising vitality. Bill Condon's film seduced the public, notably thanks to the contributions of two performers. On the one hand, Beyoncé, an established star with a nearly decade-long career, and on the other, Jennifer Hudson, a newcomer, making her acting debut in the movie. The movie was originally conceived as an opportunity for Beyoncé to have a breakout role and push her career in Hollywood. But 15 years after the movie's release, we mainly remember it as Jennifer Hudson's big moment, as she's the only cast member who's received an Oscar for her performance. How come this movie alone turned Jennifer Hudson into an overnight star and why didn't Beyoncé receive anything for what is potentially her most memorable performance on film? Ever since the beginning of her solo career, one of Beyoncé's main goals was to get recognized as a multi-talented artist. While she was already praised as a good vocalist and dancer thanks to her past work with Destiny's Child, the release of her first solo album solidified her reputation as a solo music performer. In parallel, she slowly built an acting career, playing in fairly minor productions, most notably Carmen A Hip Hopera, Austin Powers in Gold Member, and The Fighting Temptations. Once it was greenlit after the success of the movie adaptation of the musical Chicago, the production of Dreamgirls gave her the opportunity to play a big movie role and get acknowledged as a triple threat. Put simply, a triple threat is a performer recognized as an accomplished singer, dancer, and actor. The versatility of triple threat talents is usually best highlighted in musicals since they require to display those three talents simultaneously. Think Liza Minnelli in Cabaret or Catherine Zeta-Jones in Chicago. You may not know the original Broadway production of Dreamgirls, but back in the 2000s, being cast in its movie adaptation was a big deal. The original show on Broadway was considered one of the most dazzling musicals of the 1980s and had not been seen by the public since then. It is loosely based on the real-life trio The Supremes and follows three African-American singers, Dina Jones, Effie White, and Laurel Robinson, as they climb the showbiz ladder with the help of their ruthless manager Curtis Taylor Jr. Critical approval and strong word of mouth kept the show on the boards for 1,522 performances and earned Jennifer Holliday a Tony for Best Performance by a Leading Actress in a Musical for her impersonation of Effie White. Yes, she did that over a thousand times. Beyoncé played the role of Dina Jones, whose career trajectory is inspired by that of Diana Ross in the 60s when she became the lead singer of The Supremes and in the 70s when she became a successful solo artist. It is by far the most glamorous role and involves a fair amount of singing. Beyoncé actually had to read for the part, but she didn't mind because she thought she was born to play the role. She truly saw the potential for Dreamgirls to further her career in Hollywood and maybe to help her achieve one of her greatest goals. I would love to have an Oscar, <laughs> but that is the most ambitious thing. <laughs> I, I, I have time for that. She literally went above and beyond in all aspects of her preparation for the role. She attempted to deglamorize her physical appearance, thickening her eyebrows and wearing a raggedy wig to get into character and detach herself from her stage diva persona. She followed a juice diet called the Master Cleanse, which made her lose 20 pounds in two weeks. And back when the movie was still in production, she co-wrote the song Listen. She put all that work into her role after touring the world with Destiny's Child the previous year and while recording the songs and shooting the music videos for her sophomore album B-Day. In December 2006, the public and critics anticipated the movie's release, as they saw it as a potential breakthrough role for Beyoncé. The nominations for the Golden Globes were announced shortly after. Bingo! Beyoncé received two nominations, 
for Best Original Song and Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy Motion Picture respectively. The hard work had finally paid off, but the nominations for the biggest award ceremony of the year were still yet to come. Jennifer Hudson was virtually unknown by the general public when Dreamgirls was released and she was originally not meant to be the main star of the movie. In fact, if you watch the original trailer, you'll see that her name is not mentioned at all. Still, her performance of numbers from musicals predates her casting for Dreamgirls. Before fame, she used to entertain passengers on the Disney Wonder cruise ship. Ed Whitlow, who performed alongside her, remembers that Jennifer left her greatest impression on guests during performances in shows themed to Hercules and The Lion King. Quote, When she sang The Circle of Life, it literally stopped the show, Whitlow said. I told her that if she wanted to advance her career, that she had to get on television. End quote. In 2004, she competed on American Idol. Despite doubts expressed by the judges early on during the competition, due to her very powerful and animated singing style, she quickly became a fan favorite and advanced through the competition. Her journey on the show was a great opportunity for her to highlight her talent and for Simon Cowell to create some memorable TV moments. While she had the goal of getting a recording contract, her dreams appeared shattered as she eventually placed seventh and did not break through after her participation. Though she had gotten a bit of exposure, the outcome of the casting process for Effie was still uncertain. 782 other people auditioned to play Effie, including R&B singer Fantasia, who'd won the American Idol season on which Jennifer competed. She originally thought that Fantasia would have an advantage because of her win, but after six months and three rounds of audition, the role was eventually hers. Anyone who's watched the movie knows that the role of Effie is actually the most central role in the musical. It's also the most demanding vocally and acting-wise. While Dina is mainly inspired by Diana Ross, Effie is more of a composite character channeling Etta James, Aretha Franklin, and Florence Ballard. The movie's plot is constructed around the struggles of Effie, who at the very beginning of the movie is the lead singer of the group. We're in the early 60s and the American charts are operating, like the rest of society, under a regime of racial segregation. Curtis Taylor is a visionary who knows that the barriers are bound to break soon. As he wants to craft a new pop sound to reach a broader audience, Dina, who has a beauty more in line with the fashion canons, is thinner and has a quote-unquote softer voice, becomes the lead singer, while Effie, who actually has better vocal skills, is sidelined. Because of her repeated acts of defiance, their manager decides to replace Effie and kick her out of the group without prior notice. Destiny's Child Style some will recognize the sad fate that Barry Gordy reserved for Florence Ballard, co-founder and lead singer of the Supremes, who was outstayed in favor of Diana Ross. The tension among the characters then culminates and leads to the performance of It's All Over and And I'm Telling You I'm Not Going, a climactic moment highlighting Jennifer Hudson's talent as a compelling actress and a vocal powerhouse, most probably the single best moment of the entire film. While Dina eventually turns into a solo superstar, Effie becomes a single mother on welfare and struggles to take care of her daughter, who happens to be Curtis Taylor's child. Yet the girls triumph in the end by being true to themselves and no longer letting business get in the way of their relationship. Funnily enough, this movie about the rise and success of a black girl group proposes the happy ending that neither the Supremes nor Destiny's Child ever got to experience, a big reunion of all the group members, past and present. The musical's narrative and the versatility and range required to play the role of Effie allow Jennifer Hudson to put her singing and acting talent on full display. Her impersonation of Effie was unanimously praised by critics and the public, especially her performance of And I'm Telling You I'm Not Going, which made audience members in some movie theaters give her a standing ovation. Though her name did not appear in the opening credits, everyone knew by the end that she was the true star of the film. At the 79th Academy Awards, Dreamgirls received 8 nominations but was not nominated for Best Director or Best Picture. 
It was a good addition for black actors who took up 5 of 20 nominations in acting categories. Unfortunately, Beyoncé was not one of them. One of the main reasons why she did not get an Oscar nomination is because throughout the movie she does a much better job at singing than at acting. Many critics noticed that imbalance in her skill set as a performer. Lou Luminique for the New York Post, Beyoncé isn't much more than adequate in the thinly written character of Dina, who is required to do little but look wide-eyed and sexy. A subplot about Curtis's plans to star her in a Cleopatra movie is positively deadly. Dina does get a new number, listen, and it's Beyoncé's big moment, even if she ends up breaking character to deliver it. Claudia Puig, USA Today The weakest link is the stunning nose. The camera clearly loves her, and her singing is not in contention, but as an actress, she has a vapid quality. Despite the array of dazzling fashion ensembles and the efforts to channel Diana Ross, her performance remains one note, particularly in contrast to Hudson's nuanced portrayal. End quote. One could argue that Beyoncé did not really leave her comfort zone with that role. She pretty much did what she always does, singing and dancing on stage, but with a Diana Ross outfit on, and she did not faithfully impersonate her character, since she went above and beyond vocally, while Dina is actually described in the script and in the movie as a relatively weak singer. But she could have been nominated in another category, Best Original Song. After all, many of our favorite pop stars have won this award. We can mention Adele in 2013, Lady Gaga in 2019, or her in 2021. So a Best Original Song award for Beyoncé was not out of reach, but the song was written by four people, Henry Krieger, Scott Cutler, Anne Preben, and Beyoncé. In 2005, the Academy of Motion Pictures ratified a pair of rules designed to limit the number of statuettes handed out on awards night. One of those rules, officially known as Rule 16, capped the number of songwriters who can receive an Oscar at three, stating that, quote, no more than two statuettes will normally be given in the original song category. A third statuette may be awarded when there are three essentially equal contributors to a song. The Oscar songwriting branch decided to qualify Krieger, Preven, and Cutler for the Best Song Prize as they considered that Beyoncé contributed the least to the writing of the song, but did not provide any explanation as to how they arrived at that conclusion. But behind closed doors, choosing between experienced professionals who dedicated their careers to songwriting and a newcomer who was more known as a pop star than a songwriter was probably not a hard decision. Meanwhile, Jennifer Hudson received an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress and was heavily favored to win the Oscar, thanks in part to her outstanding performance of And I'm Telling You I'm Not Going. In a rare instance of industry-wide support, she prevailed at all of the major precursors that year, the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice, BAFTA, and SAG Awards. Most critics agreed to say that Jennifer Hudson was the true star of the movie. Quote, Beyoncé is an entrancing presence, but the movie's big discovery is Jennifer Hudson as honest, uncompromising Effie. She's marvelous, yet her name appears in small, almost illegible print on the posters." End quote. There are multiple reasons why the public as well as critics, and particularly the Academy of Motion Pictures, may have liked her performance. First. The Academy likes roles involving a physical transformation and expressing a wide range of emotions. It's something that she does very well as Effie goes from rising singing star to struggling single mother. Second, she carries the climax of the movie on her own and unlike Beyoncé delivers a great performance both in terms of singing and acting. Third. Well, she embodies a type of character that the Oscars have rewarded many times over the years. The struggling black woman. In the specific case of Jennifer Hudson, she played a rather sophisticated version of the well-known stereotype of the sapphire, also known as the angry black woman, as Effie's defiant attitude towards her management is framed as rude, loud, stubborn, and overbearing in contrast to Dina's behavior much more passive and meek, at least in the first part of the movie. This duality between two forms of black womanhood, one embodied by a quote-unquote fat, 
dark-skinned, sassy black woman and another by a thin, lighter-skinned woman with a dignified stature doesn't only appear in Dreamgirls but also in many more movies. But in this instance, it may have played in favor of Jennifer Hudson given the Oscars bias towards rewarding minorities for playing stereotypical roles. It's sure that what was a great night for Jennifer Hudson must have been quite an upsetting one for Beyonce. Jennifer was the least experienced actor in the movie and eventually the one receiving an award. Her singing style, which was perceived as a flaw to be corrected on American Idol, became her greatest quality in Dreamgirls. There must be a reason why plus-size black women with big voices get praised in musicals while they usually struggle and get overlooked in the rest of the music industry. It is probably because in the music industry, the struggle happens behind the scenes, while in musicals it takes place on stage for our entertainment. What about how I feel? The one we're famous, I'll write great things for you. What about me? What about me? Jennifer Hudson mentioned her grandmother, who was an outstanding singer, but never got the opportunity to show her talent as one of her main influences. After experiencing first hand criticism and rejection for the way she sang, no one was better than Miss Hudson herself to bring the soulful, dynamic, and uncompromising Effie onto the big screen.